Hello, everyone. This is your host, Ian or Kelly, for IJR Sports. Today, we are doing the IJR Sports Show, and mo and more importantly, I am doing my 2017 NFL mock draft. Okay. But before we begin on that, there's some things I have to say. Okay. First off, I want to talk about the Golden State Warriors. Okay. And I was reading something. I was reading something before I got on here. The owner of the Golden State Warriors got mad at the Oklahoma City Thunder owner for not... How do I put this? For not basically kissing Kevin Durant's butt. That's basically the only way I can say it. Okay, he got mad. The, the Warriors owner got mad at the Oklahoma City Thunder because they didn't show Kevin Durant love. Okay, first off, you took Kevin Durant from Oklahoma City. And two, and two why would you show any love to somebody who left? Okay, I'm just putting that out there, alright? But lastly, there's one last thing I want to talk about. For all of these fans, and I'm, just, I'm talking to the owner as well, you know, the way I look at it is this, okay? You have been relevant for four years. Okay, you're not the Celtics, you're not the Lakers, okay? You're not a team that has been around and has been relevant for 30, 40, 50 years. Okay, you're not the... Okay, you're... Okay? To me, what the Golden State Warriors are, they are they are one of those teams that, you know, is relevant for a couple of years, they, they, pot, they win a championship, and then they disappear. That is, to me, what the Warriors are. Okay? I'll say it, kind of like the Seahawks. Kind of like the Seahawks, how, you know, they've been... You know, they've been relevant for the past couple of years, but when their players start leaving, and they will, you know, they, and then they're going to disappear, and they're not going to be relevant for the next 30 years. It happens. It happens in sports. Unless you're the Yankees or the Red Sox, okay, unless you are the Lakers or the Celtics, unless you're the Patriots or you're the Steelers, you're not going to be relevant for much long, Okay. That's because, and that's the thing about the Warriors. Like I said, they've been relevant for the past four four years. To sometime, at some point, the Warriors are going to start losing. Or they're not going to be playing at the level that people want them to. And when that happens, a lot of people are going to turn on them. Okay? I've seen it happen with so many teams. So basically, the whole point, and to recap what I'm saying, I, I mean, the, the Warriors owner, he keeps talking about how, you know, we are great and all that. All I'm saying is, is that you've been relevant for four years. You won a championship. That I'll be honest, if Kyrie and Love were playing, you wouldn't have won. And when you do not play up to the level that you're supposed to, people are going to turn on you. Because I've seen it with so many teams. Okay, I just wanted to talk about that. I just wanted to, you know, let that, you know, I just wanted to talk about that. I just wanted to, you know, give my thoughts about that because I've been really wanting to talk about the Warriors and, you know, the fan base. I really have. But now, one last thing before we get into my mock draft, which will be great. I want to talk about LeBron. Okay. LeBron, he sat last. He, he sat against the Clippers. I will say this. Um, did Michael Jordan sit? Did John Stockton sit? Did uh, Did Carl Malone sit? Great right, producer, Mike. You're, okay, yeah, you're 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 not you're shaking your head. No. Uh, hey, what about uh, Kobe Bryant when he was healthy? When he was in his prime, did he did he sit? To me, it seems like the old 80s, 90s, and even early 2000s guys, when they were in their prime, they they had that will, they had that passion to play every single game. Okay, Michael Jordan, he played 82 games nine times. LeBron, he hasn't even done 82 games, not even once. 
okay? To me, him sitting out, and so is Kyrie, last, uh, not even, maybe last night or two days before, against the Clippers. All I'm going to say is, is that, to me, it shows a lot about LeBron. And it shows about his character. Okay? And I'm not a person who normally bashes people, but, you know, you're in your prime, you know, LeBron, you are right now in your prime. You're the one who's supposed to be winning championships and all that. But you're sitting so many games out. And like I said, he has never played in a 82 games. He has never played 82 games. He's never played a full season. Michael Jordan had nine. Just, just keep that in mind. Okay. So now let me get into my NFL mock draft, the reason why most people are here. Okay. First, I want, first pick, the Cleveland Browns. I had them selecting defensive end Miles Garrett from Texas A&M. Okay, I know the Browns' biggest need is a quarterback, but Miles Garrett is the best player in the draft, and I would be stunned if he was not chosen number one overall by the Cleveland Browns. I would be shocked. Pick number two, San Francisco 49ers. I have them choosing Sol uh, Solman Thomas from Stanford. Okay, quarterback is their biggest need, but there is no quarterback that is worth a top two pick. And they cannot ignore uh, Sol uh, Sol <coughs> Solomon Thomas, who is one of the best defensive players in this draft. It will help out their D-line with Eric M uh, Armstead. And DeForest Bunkner. Next, we have the Chicago Bears pick at number three. Okay. Alright, so next we have the Chicago Bears pick at number three. I will have my producer, Mike, announce who the Bears are going to take at pick number three. Chicago Bears pick S. Jamal Adams from LSU. Yeah, he has them choosing safety, Jamal Adams from LSU. Thank you, Producer Mike. You know, safety is one of the biggest needs for the Chicago Bears, and Jamal Adams is a great prospect who will make an immediate impact for the Chicago Bears and upgrade that safety position. All right, pick number four, Jacksonville Jaguars. I have them selecting running back, Leonard Fournette from LSU. That's right. I have two LSU players going back to back. The way I look at it, the Jacksonville Jaguars have spent tons of money on their defense. They need to upgrade the offense and help Blake Bortles. So I say they select the best offensive player in the draft, and that is Leonard Fournette. He's the best offensive player in this draft. Pick number five, Tennessee Titans. I have them selecting cornerback Marshawn Lattimore from Ohio State. Okay, the Titans, they need a number one corner. Somebody who can defend against DeAndre Hopkins, T.Y. Hilton, and Allen Robinson. Those three are the best wide receivers in the ASC South in their division. And, and Marshawn Lattimore is the best corner in this draft class. Pick number six, New York Jets. I have them selecting running back Delvin Cook from Florida State. The New York Jets, they need to get an explosive running back who can carry the New York Jets offense on his back for the next five years. Okay, They need to go to a running style offense, and to me, Delvin Cook from Florida State can be that guy for the New York Jets. Number seven, pick number seven, Los Angeles Chargers. I have them selecting safety Malik Hooker from Ohio State. Last year, the Los Angeles Chargers, they made a great pick last year, getting Joey Bosa. Great pick by them. I say they will make another great pick this year, and I have them choosing another Ohio State Buckeye in Hooker. Okay, He'll upgrade their defense, and he will be their replacement for Eric Weddle, who left in 2016. Okay, pick number eight, Carolina Panthers, defensive end Derek Barnett from University of Tennessee. Think about it. They traded Coney Ely to New England. 
Yes, they have veterans, Julius Peppers and Charles Johnson, but what they need is a young defensive end that will fit that will help out that D line. Okay, Derek Barnett, he can fill that need and he would give them a good player at the defensive end spot for the next couple of years. Pick number nine, Cincinnati Bengals. I have them choosing linebacker Reuben Foster from Alabama. I uh, yes, I know Reuben Foster got in trouble and he got sent home at the combine. But if there is one team out there that gives chances to troubled players, it's the Cincinnati Bengals. I mean, Barfeck, Pac-Man Jones, okay, they give chances to players who've had, you know, trouble. All right, so I think Reuben Foster would also fit well in the Bengals system. Pick number 10, I had the Buffalo Bills selecting wide receiver Mike Williams from Clemson. Okay, the Buffalo Bills, they re-signed quarterback Tyrod Taylor, so they need to focus on getting themselves a wide receiver who can play alongside Sammy Watkins. I know he's been injury-plagued the past two years, but he still is number one wide receiver. So I had them choosing a Clemson wide receiver and Mike Williams to team up with a ex-Clemson Tiger in Sammy Watkins. Okay, I was watching Mike Williams during the National Championship game, and he played great. And he's the best wide receiver in this NFL draft. Pick number 11, the New Orleans Saints. I had them choose a defensive end, Jonathan Allen from Alabama. I have Jonathan Allen falling to the New Orleans Saints, and they get a great player who can play alongside Cameron Jordan and upgrade that defense that has been horrible the past couple of years for the New Orleans Saints. Pick number 12, the Cleveland Browns select quarterback Mitch Trotsky from North Carolina. Like I said earlier, the Cleveland Browns' biggest need is a quarterback. Osweiler's not going to cut it. I say they will fill that need with this pick. Mitch Trotsky is the best quarterback in this draft, and he would be an upgrade from the 1,000 from the quarterbacks they used in 2016. Pick number 13, Arizona Cardinals select quarterback Deshaun Kaiser from Notre Dame. Carson Palmer's at the end of his career, and Kaiser is a great player to draft. You know, he could sit for a while, develop behind Carson Palmer. Also, he's the second best quarterback in this draft. Pick number 14, the Philadelphia Eagles, they select wide receiver John Ross from Washington. Yes, I know the Philadelphia Eagles got Alshon Jeffrey and Torrey Smith, but the Eagles need speed. So they select the fastest wide receiver in the draft, and they take John Ross to team up with Alshon Jeffrey and Torrey Smith. Pick number 15, Indianapolis Colts, guard Forrest Lamp from Western Kentucky. Okay, Lamp is the best offensive lineman in this draft, and that is the biggest need for the Indianapolis Colts. Okay, they need to protect Andrew Luck, and Forrest Lamp can be the guy to fill that need. He can be, he can be alongside Ryan Kelly, who they drafted last year, Jack Muhort, okay, those two, he can, he can you know, be alongside them, and they would have a pretty good offensive line. Pick number 16, Baltimore Ravens, tight end O.J. Howard from Alabama. Yes, the Baltimore Ravens have three tight ends on their roster, but one is injury prone, one is old and is about to retire, and the other one is a bust. Okay, they select O.J. Howard and allows them to fill their biggest need. And that biggest need is getting a player that Joe Flacco can throw to. And believe me, O.J. Howard can, can do that. Just check what he did at the Senior Bowl. Pick number 17, Washington Redskins. Linebacker Jabril Peppers from Michigan. Jabril Peppers, he's a very unique athlete. And the Redskins, they have a need at two spots. Linebacker and safety. Peppers can play both if they need him to. And they can put him at any of those spots. Pick number 18, Tennessee Titans. Wide receiver, Corey Davis from Western Michigan. 
I had the Tennessee Titans draft their biggest need with that pick they had at number five. But now at number 18, they fixed their second biggest need, and that is to get a number one wide receiver. Corey Davis, he has the talent, he has the skill to become the number one guy in Tennessee. Number 19, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They select tight end Taco Charlton from Michigan. That's right. Three Michigan players in a row. Charlton, he is the best player available at this point, and he will finally be selected at Tampa Bay at this pick. And also, come on, they can make taco t-shirts. That's like the easiest promotion that Tampa Bay could ever do. Taco t-shirts. <laughs> pick number 20, Denver Broncos, offensive tackle Garrett Boyles from Utah. The Broncos' biggest need and the thing that cost them last year was their offensive line. Okay, Garrett Boyles from Utah is the right guy to fill that need. They can put him at the offensive line and improve it. Pick number 21, Detroit Lions, defensive end, Charles Harris from Missouri. They fill their biggest need, which is the defensive line. I know they signed a couple of players, but at the same time, their D-line is what needs improvement. Pick number 22, Miami Dolphins, tight end David Najuku from Miami. They, I guess they did get Julius Thomas, but their tight end is still in need for the, for the Dolphins, and they would be selecting a local because Naju, Najuku being from the U, you know, the Miami. Pick number 23, the New York Giants... They select quarterback Deshaun Watson from Clemson. Eli Manning, he's at the end of his career, and Deshaun Watson would be a great fit for the Giants system. He would fit right in. And also, just like Kaiser, he can sit behind Eli for a couple of years and, you know, develop. Pick number 24, Oakland Raiders. Defensive tackle Malik McDowell from Michigan State. The Oakland Raiders' biggest need is to fix the defense, okay? They gave up a lot of points in 2016, so I say they select the best defensive player on the board, which is Malik McDowell from Michigan State. Pick number 25, the Houston Texans select offensive tackle Cam Robinson from Alabama. The Houston Texans, they need to upgrade the offensive line because it is one of their biggest needs. Cam Robinson, he'd be a great pick for them. He'd be able to step right in on day one, and he'd be able to improve that offensive line, okay? Pick number 26, Seattle Seahawks, offensive tackle Ryan Ramzik from Wisconsin. Everyone who's a Seahawks fan knows their biggest need is the offensive line. Ramzik is the best offensive lineman still on the board, and he would definitely fill the need that the Seahawks, that Seahawks need. Pick number 27. Kansas City Chiefs select quarterback Pat Mahomes from Texas Tech. Okay, let's face it, Kansas City fans. Alex Smith is getting older, and they need to draft their, court, their future quarterback now. Okay, Mahomes has the talent to take over for Kansas City in a couple of years down the line when they move on from Alex Smith. Okay, to me, the Chiefs are preparing for the future, and their future would be Pat Mahomes. Pick number 28, the Dallas Cowboys select tight end Evan Ingram from Mississippi. Jason Witten, he has been a great player for the Dallas Cowboys, but he is at the end of his career, and the Cowboys need a tight end who will help out Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott on offense. Ingram can do that. Pick number 29, the Green Bay Packers select linebacker Zach Cunningham from Vanderbilt. The Green Bay Packers, they need a young pass rusher, and Zach Cunningham would be able to fill that need. Pick number 30, the Pittsburgh Steelers select linebacker Tarkus McKinney from UCLA. James Harrison, he has been great for the Steelers, no doubt. But he is, you know, getting a lot older. He is at the end of his career. 
Bud Dupree, he is a great young guy, so they need to get another linebacker to be the opposite of him. And McKinley is a great pick for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Pick number 31, the Atlanta Falcons select defensive end Jordan Willis from Kansas State. Even though they got Poe, they still need a pass rusher. And Jordan Willis is someone who hasn't gotten a lot of attention, but he will be a great pick for the Atlanta for the Atlanta Falcons. And the last pick in the first round, and the last pick in this mock draft, pick number 32, the New Orleans Saints select cornerback Marlon Humphrey from Alabama. Yes, I know the Saints are in talks about getting Malcolm Butler from New England. But I have the Saints picking a corner. And there is no better corner in this draft to get than Marlon Humphrey. Okay? He should be a top 15 pick. But in this draft, I have him falling right into the New Orleans Saints lap. And he will be the steal of this draft. If he gets to the Saints at 32. He would be the steal. And think about it. The Saints in this draft alone, they get Jonathan Allen and Marlon Humphrey. That is a great draft for the city of New Orleans. Great draft for the Saints. And I think that it is great draft for that team. Okay, that is my NFL mock draft. You know, just let me know what you think. Give me your feedback. Am I correct? Am I incorrect? Let me know. You can tweet me at IJR Sports, or you can call into the show by typing in the number 702-518-0970. Once again, if you want to call into the show and talk about the NFL mock draft and talk about you know my pick, 702-518-0970. Okay, because to me, I think that my mock draft is pretty good, okay? I looked at everyone's needs. I tried to do this draft based off of every team's needs, okay? Yes, there is a couple of them that are the best available, but mainly they are the best that they're the best available. They're not the best available. They are based on their needs. All right. So that was my NFL mock draft. Thank you for thank you for tuning into that. And uh, all I'm gonna say is is that just let me know. Do you agree or do you disagree? And I believe that is it. That is it for the IGR Sports Show. But before I get off, I want to say thank you to everyone who has been supporting the IGR Sports Show. Say thanks to everyone who's been supporting my goal of becoming a sports journalist. And I also want to say thanks to my producers over here, producers Mike and producer Lorraine. Uh, thank you for helping out. I really do appreciate it. So, yeah, this is it for IGR Sports. I am your host, Ian R. Kelly. I do shows Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern here on Spreaker.com. And in until next time, I am your host, Ian R. Kelly, and I will see you next time.